Hey guys, my name's Thomas Busby and welcome to another video in the series of me trying to find the best wide angle lens available for the Fuji X mount system. Today we're having a look at maybe the best kit lens you can get, the 16 to 80 f4 from Fujifilm. Now I feel the most important factor when looking at a lens for especially landscape photography is how sharp it is, how much detail can you get out of the lens. So wide at 16 millimeters, it's actually pretty fantastic and stays fantastic up until about that 35 millimeter range, though center sharpness does seem to drop off after about 50 millimeters. Corners at 16 millimeters are great and they get real good around the f5 to f8 range, though amazingly sharp at around that 35, 23 millimeter range. Corner sharpness is just never great at 80 millimeters, unfortunately. So if you truly want to get phenomenal results out of this as a wide angle option, you're actually best to go to that 23mm mark and do a panoramic and you'll get phenomenal, I mean world class sharpness out of that lens. So when looking at the value and the price of this lens, it sits pretty on par with the 18 to 135. I'd give it a 6.3 out of 10. Yes, you can get better deals, but it is definitely in the better half as far as price goes for what you get out of it. When looking at the versatility, it is the second most versatile lens Fujifilm make, with only the 18 to 135 being more versatile. Though I'd recommend using the 16 to 80 below 50 millimeters, it's still phenomenally sharper than the 18 to 135, so it does get a lot of points for versatility. As that 80 millimeter range is still usable, it's just not as optimal staying below that 50 millimeter range. So let's have a look at some of the features. It is a 72mm filter and lens cap. It does have stabiliser, though there is no switch to turn the stabiliser on and off. And on that subject, from testing all the lenses with stabiliser on and stabiliser off when using a tripod, I could not see any difference in sharpness with that stabiliser on or off on a tripod. Handheld, yes, the stabiliser is fantastic, and it is on most lenses, though it's really great on this one. Um, but if you're using a tripod, not having that switch to turn it on and off I don't feel makes much of a difference. I know I mention this in every video where it has it, but this lens... I know I mention it in every video that has it, but this lens is weather sealed, which I love. You can hear that little, like, that softer thud as you zoom in and out, and that's the ceiling pushing any moisture and dust off that barrel there. So if you're out under waterfalls, ocean spray, condensation, anything, sand to a point, Anything landing on there is just going to get pushed out of the lens when you close up rather than get sucked up into the lens and destroy it, where the sealed lenses last longer. When it comes to size and weight, it is a little bit heavier compared to some of the other wide angle options. Though, as far as size goes, for me, that's perfect. I'm six foot tall, I guess I have normal size hands for someone that's my height, and that lens fits on my hand perfectly. It feels very, very comfortable. Though, like I said, it is a bit bigger and a bit heavier. It's pretty much the same weight as the 18 to 135. There's only a couple of grams difference. Though compared to the 16 to 55, which is the other big major zoom, I guess you'd compare this to, it is quite a bit lighter than that. But that is the f4 versus the f2.8 making a difference there. The specs aside, the stats aside, I actually love the size and feel of this lens. As, as that one lens in the hand, I really enjoyed using it. It felt good and the size and the weight for me was perfect but you can definitely get lighter, smaller options that are just as wide, if not wider. Okay, so when it comes to aberrations of a netting, like always, very, very few. However, for astrophotography, once again, like the 18 to 135, this is right near the bottom of the list, so it doesn't get many points for that. That doesn't mean you can't get great results, or pleasing results at least for astrophotography, but nearly every other wide-angle lens available from Fujifilm is better for astrophotography than the 16 to 80, but like I said, it doesn't mean you still can't get good results. Now for video, I think this is where this lens was really designed. That constant f4 aperture as you zoom is awesome. Its AF is deadly silent, you can't hear a thing out of it, and it is very, very accurate. Unlike the 16 to 55, which does this like little bit of a shimmer hunt just as it locks onto focus, the 16 to 80 just snaps and stay with it and stays smooth. All of the newer lenses, like the, the 35 and the 23 f2s and the 16 to 80 f4, those little bit lower aperture lenses, have so much such a better focus system built in for video, and the 16 to 80 is no disappointment. As far as video goes, this I would pick over the 18 to 135 and the 16 to 55 every single time. It's it's video. Autofocus performance is fantastic. Well, I guess you, in, unless you're doing low light stuff and you're going to use manual focus, then maybe the 16 to 55 would still be pretty great as it's phenomenal and that's going to be next week's video. But for AF performance, the 16 to 80 is a fantastic option. Now, I'm a massive pixel peeper and I like optimal image quality, but the 16 to 80. I really enjoyed using. If you want phenomenal results, around that 23 to 35 mil range, you can get phenomenal results, especially as a panoramic. For video, it's awesome. As a 
Versatile option, it's fantastic. The size and weight, it, I wouldn't want heavier. This for me is like the limit of my walking around kind of lens. And I definitely got images out of this that made me smile. I enjoyed using it and I really loved it. And, and like I said, I'm a massive pixel peeper. I do lab tests, for example, on all lenses to see which one's the sharpest. And this one still has massive potential for phenomenally sharp results out of it. You just got to know how to use it. So if we chuck the 16 to 80 into the TB photography algorithm to see how well it stacks up, considering sharpness, aperture, price, weight, wideness, versatility, features and flaws, and as far as the landscape lens goes, it gets a final score of 57.27. But what's truly amazing is that if you stay below that 50mm mark and don't use a higher aperture than f10, it gets a massive score bump up to 65.89. Now as a zoom lens, and if you just stick within those little limitations, that's a phenomenally high scoring. Like I said, you can get some truly impressive results out of such a versatile lens. And if you wanna, if you get into that situation where you're like, man, this is an amazing scene, I wanna print this big, use it around that 23 millimeter mark and do a panoramic or just try not to zoom too much and you'll get incredibly sharp detailed results out of such a versatile option. But as this series is mostly focused on the wide angle side of life, if you're just looking at this as a 16mm lens, then its score does drop down a few ranks to 56.7. Though, it still gets a very healthy 64.33 if you only use it between the f5 and f10 aperture ranges. Now as always guys, if you have any questions about this lens or any other lens, please let me know down in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them for you. If you could like, share and please subscribe, it would mean the world to me and help me get one step closer to doing this full time for a living. But otherwise, until next time, I'll catch you next time.